And then this is, uh, this is also data from the uh, FASTER study, so the ultra-endurance athletes that were low-carb or high-carb. So we did, from muscle biopsies in that study, uh, at three different time points, we looked at uh, transcriptome analysis. So we looked at gene expression of all known genes. Uh, I think we had quantitative data on over 23,000 genes uh, at each time point. And of all of those data, the gene that had the most significant difference between the low carb and the high carb group was HMG CoA synthase, which is a rate limiting, codes for the rate limiting enzyme in ketogenesis. So, that has not happened by chance. Um, there's something, for some reason, um, this particular enzyme is increased in athletes who are keto adapted and it occurs pre-exercise and post-exercise. So I, I don't know why this would go up if you're not producing ketones in, uh, in skeletal muscle, but it, it's, the gene expression is highly uh, uh, expressed in these keto adapted athletes. Uh, now, we know that ketones can actually be produced from leucine uh, through an alternative breakdown of or pathway of leucine degradation. Uh, and people have studied this as well, mostly animal models, though. Um, and it's a pretty low percentage of the total ketones, but uh, it's been estimated in animal studies that about 4% of total ketone production is from leucine breakdown. And that probably decreases as you become keto adapted because of the leucine sparing effect. But nonetheless, um, in the truest sense, ketone production does occur in muscle from leucine to some extent. And what's even more interesting here, and this is a little nuance, but um, it's not evidence, evidence that ketones are produced in muscle, but there is some transformation going on within skeletal muscle. So uh, there's been about a half a dozen studies published now, and most of these use the forearm arterial venous difference model. So they'll literally catheterize uh, an ar artery and a vein that, that feed and drain the forearm muscle in, in people and look at the delivery of substrates, in this case ketones, and then what comes out on the venous side. Um, and what you see is, uh, so if you focus on the first two um, rows there, that, those are the ketone levels um, that are in the venous, I'm sorry, the arterial side. So you've got ketone levels over 60 hours or so of fasting. And you see um, those are micromolar, but um, less than, 0.1 um, millimolar, that then they increase to almost 0.5 and for acetoacetate and then almost one millimolar and then beta hydroxybutyrate is quite a bit higher. Now the two rows below there, that's the flux. And you see the flux of acetoacetate is much higher and beta hydroxybutyrate is actually negative. So what's happening here is there's a dramatic increase in acetoacetate acetoacetate uptake into skeletal muscle as you become keto adapted or during, in this case, prolonged fasting. But what comes out the other side is beta hydroxybutyrate. So there's a conversion happening within skeletal muscle. And of course, that, you know, that enzyme is beta hydroxydehydrogenase. So there's a uptake of acetoacetate, but then a, a release of beta-hydroxybutyrate. And this is almost assuredly the reason why we always have more beta-hydroxybutyrate in the circulation than we do acetoacetate. Usually, you know, it's, it's around 60, 70, 80 percent of the total ketones it can vary depending on the condition. But um, what's coming out of the liver is not that ratio. It's more of a 50-50 ratio. So this peripheral conversion of acetoacetate to BHB is happening specifically in skeletal muscle. Now, you could say, well, so what? Um, does maybe that's because the brain prefers beta-hydroxybutyrate. Um, 
I don't think that's the case. I've asked a lot of experts. The brain doesn't care if it's acetoacetate or beta-hydroxybutyrate. In fact, you've got to convert it back to acetoacetate to oxidize it anyway. Um, but if you look at that reaction, beta-hydroxydehydrogenase, um, look at the cofactors, it's one of these redox reactions, right? It produces NAD+. So being keto-adapted and undergoing this transformation provides a source of NAD plus for muscle cells. And if you haven't followed that literature at all, NAD plus is a super hot molecule right now. Um, it's being linked to all sorts of uh, positive cellular functions within cells, particularly related to longevity uh, and so forth. It's just one of many recent reviews out on NAD. So um, here we have um, a ketogenic diet um, probably you could say is a really good way to keep adequate stores of NADA because uh, we know those go down, for example, in aging.